Hello and welcome to the Baggies podcast YouTube channel. Now, my name's Louis and I'm actually the host of the Baggies podcast. So you'll be hearing my voice, hopefully, if you listen to the podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, wherever you listen to. But I thought on the YouTube channel, the only thing you see really is the podcast. So I thought I'll bring something a bit fresher, something a bit new, and that is going to be this preview video and potentially more if you guys are enjoying this. So this is a preview frag game against Sheffield United which kicks off at 8 o'clock on Saturday at the Hawthorns. This is a huge game, it couldn't be any more colossal if it tried. It is 19th versus 20th in the table, both sides need a win. The only two sides yet to win in the Premier League this season are Sheffield United and West Brom. So if you enjoy this video make sure you smash the like button, you subscribe, you turn your notification bell on to never miss an upload and also make sure you comment in your score predictions for the game. So without further ado, we're going to preview the game of West Bromwich Albion versus Sheffield United here on the Baggies Podcast YouTube channel. So let's start with us and that's West Bromwich Albion. We are, you know, as you probably know, you're probably a West Brom fan, you know, we're in a bit of trouble at the moment, not winning in any of our Premier League games and Sheffield United have to be just about the only side in the same boat as us, the only other side yet to pick up a win in the Premier League. Now we've got three points, all of three coming from us, from draws against Brighton, Burnley and also the draw against Chelsea which ended 3-3. We've had some promising performances however which probably should have resulted in wins. But the Chelsea game should have resulted in a win. Perhaps the Brighton game we could have been uh, you know we were a bit unfortunate not to get three points. Also the game against um, the game against Man United we were really really unfortunate not to, not to get three points. Unfortunately not to get a point against Tottenham either as well but unfortunately the Man United game we, we're leaving that to rest at the moment. I mean, we can all feel incensed, but at the end of the day, it's not really going to do anything. But you can listen to the podcast, which really goes into detail about the VAR and refereeing decisions were an absolute abomination in that game. So if you, you know, you have missed that, go and check it out. But it was actually a disgrace of a refereeing and VAR performance from uh, in the Man United game. So more about us. We've had promising and unlucky performances. You know, we've been unlucky to lose. We've had some really good performances. It's clear the players are playing for Slavin and they're playing for the badge and they're putting in a 100% effort. But we've got to start turning the good performances into good points, which, uh, you know, is what we failed to do, really. We failed to have that cutting edge and that failed to have that, you know, last ditch, you know, winner or thing, something like that. Perhaps we've been a bit unlucky, but perhaps that we need a bit more uh, from everybody and we need to just end up putting the ball in the back of the net and, and you know, winning the game. Burnley and Brighton, we played, you know, they were probably must-win games and we were, you know, we, we drew both of those, which I suppose was okay. You could have lost them. I feel like we could have lost the Burnley game quite easily with them having chances hitting the bar and whatnot. And the Brighton game being no different really either. Uh, but we were absolutely class in the second half. But when it came to that real, real must win against Fulham, the team that are meant to be down there with you at the bottom, we completely crumbled. Now, you can argue all you like about the tactics, you can argue all you like, but the desire didn't look there from the players. It looked like we got a bit nervous, perhaps, and we didn't look like we knew what we were doing, really, in that Fulham game, and that we crumbled, and we didn't we didn't win the game. We lost 2-0, in fact. So, for this, in the lead-up to this game, we've been really promising, and we need to convert those uh, promising signs into good points and a good performance against Sheffield. You feel like if we play like we did against Manchester United and Spurs, we've got a chance of winning here. Sheffield United are not the best side. We'll go and talk about them more in a bit, a bit of detail in a minute, but they're not the best side. Uh, they're the only team with less points than us in the Premier League, so we need, you know, we really do need a win on Saturday. Uh, our star man uh, so far has probably been Sam Johnston. He really bounced back from that uh, mistake against Spurs in the game against Man United. Probably a man of the match. I mean, most football apps will, or, and football sources will put Bruno Fernandes as the man of the match for scoring the only goal of the game. But let's face it, he had, he had to have two penalty attempts to score it. Sam Johnston was undeniably the man of the match in that game. And I feel like he had an absolute blinder, making save after save after save. And I feel like if he pulls out another performance like that, we could be on for a win against Sheffield United. We're not quite sure what sort of formation we might bring out against Sheffield United. The past couple of weeks we played a 5-4-1, so we're not really sure what we're going to bring out against Sheffield United. We've seen that perhaps a 4-3-3 could work, but also this 5 at the back seems to be the way forward. We put in the most positive performances with that formation, so I can see us using it again, really. Uh, a key man, obviously, is Sam Johnson, as I've mentioned already, but we've had good performances from Conor Gallagher throughout the season so far. He's looked really good. He's looked like to be in the box-to-box -box midfielder we've really been lacking. With some good creative displays as well and some real good uh, grit and desire in that midfield, something that we've uh, perhaps missed and a real bit of mobility alongside um, 
Jake Livermore, which has really been missing for, for the Albion as well. So let's move on to talk about Sheffield United. Now, the, as I've said, they're the only other team in the league without a win in the Premier League. The only team lower than us in the table, they're bottom of the league, we're 19th, and they're really struggling to put the ball in the back of the net. However, I've seen a lot of Sheffield United fans and I've spoke to many of them on Twitter, and they say that their defence has been, you know, pretty, pretty rocky as well. You know, it's not been the most solid. Uh, and it seems like a classic case, really, for unfortunately for Sheffield United, of being second season syndrome. Because as we know, you know, Chris Wilder's almost got them to European football last season. It feels like they're really being found out by a lot of Premier League teams. People know how they're going to play and people know how to beat them. And that's a worrying sign for Chris Wilder and Sheffield United. However, we need to be ruthless in this sort of game. We need to go, we need to go in with positive mentality and go and get a win. Sheffield United are probably not the, the not the team they were last season. They're being found out, as I said. But you know, it looks like second season syndrome for Sheffield United. They're really struggling, and a lot of Sheffield United fans are worried about number one the lack of goals, but also their leaky defence because that defence looked to be unbreakable last season with some fine performances at the back with that with that five at the back formation. I mean, they've had a few injuries this season. They'll have a few players out uh, out this uh, out in this game against West Brom, but it looks to be that Sheffield United are not repeating the form that they had last season. Now, Sheffield United in their last game fell to a 1-0 loss against West Ham. Now, West Ham aren't the greatest side, and they're another team that perhaps we thought would be struggling, but are really collecting a good run of results. Uh, Sheffield United lost 1-0 to them thanks to a Sebastian Halle goal for the West Ham. And it was a game in which Sheffield United fans again felt disappointed, one that they thought that they should really be uh, competing in. And unfortunately, they just weren't good enough. They seemed to be, you know, on the rocks a bit at the back and also struggling to score. With that midfield, you know, in the middle, it's a really good midfield with Sander Berg, you know, Oliver Norwood, John Fleck as well in there. Uh, Ethan Ampadu really playing well, apparently, for them, you know, being one of their standout players. He's a real young prospect and probably one that's going to go on to have big things uh, being on loan from Chelsea. But, you know, it's just not going well for Sheffield United and, you know, we're, you know, we've we got to beat them. You know, if we're going to gonna stay up, we've got to start beating these sides. We cracked against Fulham in, in that tuna loss, but we've got to go out and get a result against them, um, against Sheffield United. If we don't, you know, it could be curtains for us because that means we're bottom of the league. We're going to be bottom by, you know, a couple of points and it's difficult to reclaim that sort of advantage. Now, this is really crucial for not just us, for Sheffield United as well. They need a win. They need to go and get three points. It looks to be a game that's going to be probably won by one or two goals. You know, it looks to even be a draw, perhaps. You know, Sheffield United will look not to lose this game. But I feel like we need to be a bit more positive in order to counteract that. Sheffield, you know, we can't score, but we haven't been looking to sh too sharp up front recently. You know, we've got no goals in, in, the, last, in the last couple of games either. Uh, and even in that Fulham game, he didn't score as well. So there's a few games that we haven't scored for. So it's potentially one that, you know, we're looking pretty dead up front. Carlin Grant scored in the Brighton game. It was fantastic to see him get off uh, get off the mark with a goal. But unfortunately, he hasn't scored since. And we really need to see a bit of a goal-scoring display from Carlin. And I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. He, he, we signed him for a reason. He was Slavin's first choice for a reason. And I feel like he's the one who's going to perhaps unlock the, unlock the uh, Sheffield United defence. Along with Mateus Pereira. You saw in the last game, they had a nice bit a link up Mateus Pereira nutmegging uh, Man United players for fun it was fantastic to see that he had so much confidence playing in in what is a you know used to be such a fearful ground he used to go out to Old Trafford and realize you know we've lost before we've even played uh, where now you know anybody can go and win and we probably should have but that's that's left for another day uh, we've left that in the podcast if you want to go and listen to it and you can go and uh, analyze all the VAR and refereeing calls but it's now time for my score prediction, which, uh, you know, is something I'm going to do every week. I encourage you guys to do that in the comment section below. So if you want to comment your score prediction for West, Brom, West Bromwich Albion versus Sheffield United, I think it's going to be a 2-1 victory. I feel like Sheffield United may end up scoring. It could also be 1-0. I feel like it's going to be one separated by one goal. Uh, and I feel like we're going to have the edge in this game. I feel like we've got the quality. And Sheffield United... Uh, you know they just can't they just can't get it hack it at the moment and they just can't get the goals uh, so I feel like we've got a chance of getting a goal and getting the win and I feel like it's going to be 2-1 to West Brom I feel like Sheffield United might score because they might you know 
come out with a bit more confidence playing against a team like us. So without further ado, that brings us to the end of this episode of the Baggies podcast preview, I suppose. So if you want to see more of this, make sure you drop a like on the video, you subscribe and you're turning on your notification bell to be notified whenever we upload. Obviously, this is going to be a regular thing if you want it to be. So make sure you're showing all that support and make sure you comment in your predictions. I want to see what you guys think of the Sheffield United game on Saturday. Uh, make sure you're also following us on Twitter at the Baggies pod to keep up with all of the latest things on the Baggies podcast and make sure you're keeping up with all the episodes which are available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts and also here on YouTube. So subscribe if you're new and make sure you're liking the video and commenting your score predictions. Turn the notification bell on to never miss an upload and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. See you later.